Hey y'all, uh, this is Jason from Game Rave TV. Our Patreon shout out this episode, a huge, huge thanks to Alan R, Randall F, and especially Dakota O. Uh, you guys are just amazing. Uh, for those who haven't been keeping track, uh, obviously check the website down below. Uh, but we are literally already 13% to our first uh, Patreon goal, uh, which is the ad-free stuff. And I, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, that being said, back to the show. letter game. Uh, this time we are with the letter F, uh, which means we are going to be involving a lot of final fantasies. And that means fanboys. Abandon ship. All personnel proceed to escape pods. Close down the circuits. Evacuate the zoo. All right, since F is a fairly long list, we will throw out the usual suspects by getting rid of all the F1 games. Which are some really good, but you know, come on, present day racing, let's do it. Thrown out, uh, throw out the sports games you don't need, and that brings us to a good, healthy dose of games. Uh, from that pile of you know goodness, we're gonna start with uh, Future Cop, uh, Front Mission, and uh, let's say Forsaken. All three really good games. Uh, future Cop is kind of nifty. You basically are controlling Ed 209, uh, the future you know, girls shoot them up and so forth, missions, etc. Um, Front Mission 3, really good uh, strategy game from Squaresoft. Uh, Forsaken, you know, good old Descent-like type game that no one really cared about, but whatever. That brings us to Fear Effect 1 and 2, um, a Resident Evil control-like sci-fi game um, that actually had a really cool creative visual style to it. Um, it was active CG FMV backgrounds uh, with polygon controlled characters. Um, the art style was pretty unique for the time and it was actually made famous especially uh, by Fear Effect 2 uh, using what can only be described as unabashedly lesbian characters. Um, even the advertisements for the game basically had the two female characters in the game seductively posed and making innuendo references and so forth. Oh, feminist frequency would have a field day with that. Now there's also Fighting Force 1 and 2. Uh, unless you're going for a complete set, for God's sakes, just don't even bother with Fighting Force 2. The game can be summed up in three words. Exploding, folding chair. Fighting Force 1 was a really, really good uh, like beat em up game, like Final Fight clones, Streets of Rage clones, stuff like that. Um, really good graphics, uh, good control, uh, you know, two player. The problem was the game got really, really long, like too long. Um, I remember beating it for the first time a couple of years back and by the, I think it was the second to last stage where you're going up the elevator, I just didn't want to play anymore. I didn't care what happened. <sighs> that brings us to the Final Fantasies. Uh, starting in no particular order, uh, Final Fantasy Anthology and Chronicles can be removed just because they're basically ports of the Super Nintendo games uh, Final Fantasy uh, 4, 5, 6, and Chrono Trigger. And while those games are amazing in their own right, the PlayStation versions suck. Only because of the unnecessary loading times and the loading times. Like, there's also weird comp compatibility issues and so forth. Um, but with the loading time, if you've ever played the Super Nintendo version of Final Fantasy 6 slash 3 on the Super Nintendo, there's this thing called the Raft Trick. Long story short, you rubber down a turbo controller, set a few options, and you can basically build up your experience points automatically without even playing the game. You um, just let it sit there and it'll play itself. Um, if you did that for, say, 24 hours, by the time you came back, your characters would be maxed out completely. The loading time on the PlayStation version of the game is so bad, if you did the same thing, and I have done it, instead of being level 99, you're only about level 63. That's how much time is wasted with the loading times on the PS version, so just stick with the Super Nintendo version in that matter. Now, Final Fantasy Origins uh, was a remake of the original Famicom uh, Nintendo Final Fantasy 1 and the number 2 that we never got in America at the original time. Um, great games in their own right, really nice redone graphics, um, CG intros, all the good stuff. Uh, but once again, the loading times can be a little problematic and so forth. Plus, you can get them on PSP or, you know, just play the original Nostalgia, Famicom, and NES versions, um, which I actually kind of prefer the Nintendo one just because of Nostalgia. I mean, I was practically teething on it. Um, that's a lie. I was like nine years old. Ugh, God, I'm old. Okay, um, we're getting through this. We're good. 
no pitchforks, no torches, I haven't had any death threats yet. Uh, that brings us to the number Final Fantasies. 7, 8, and 9. Oh god, here comes. Okay, 8 is not on the list. Fuck that game. It's just awful. And somewhere my friend Justin is just dancing into a, the chair to sit down and type a response. Um, Final Fantasy 7. Okay, look. Everyone loves the game. This is true. I like the game. I loved it. I played the import three times before I played the American version, and then when I finally played the American version and discovered what a horrible translation looks like, um, yeah, oh god. Nostalgia is nothing if but rose-colored glasses. And Final Fantasy VII, if you go back to it today, you realize how broken it is. Just uh, the translation aside, the, half the characters are just idiots, like poor Barrett, um, assholes like Sid, um, or, you know, there's in-game problems that don't make any sense, like Eris dying. I've got a phoenix down, let's do this. Um, there was also the problem that Seven was the first game to make you realize that Square was starting to lose their... Their, their, their vibe, their good stuff. Um, Seven is just plagued with way, way too many mini games, um, stuff to take you off the beaten path. Um, it, it just, it just wasn't, wasn't good. It, don't get me wrong, I love the game and I'll play it again for a thousand times until I die, but it's it just as, as a, like, this is the game you have to own. No. I, it, just, no. Now, Final Fantasy IX is an amazing Final Fantasy. It was a great apology for Final Fantasy VIII. Um, in fact, IX probably would have been the winner uh, of the letter game, except for a small, teeny problem. And that problem was that four hours to the end of the game, Square once again lost their goddamn mind and didn't know what to do. So instead of trying to figure out how to end the story, they just brought in some random crazy mission and then threw a psychotic Mr. Clean look-alike at you, some blue bald head dude. Oh, God. Like, there were so many beautiful cameos and in-jokes and references to other Final Fantasies and just perfect gameplay. And, oh, God, I I hate those last four hours of that game. Um, but that being said, we are now down to our final two games for the letter game. So our last two games come down to Final Fantasy Tactics and Fox Hunt. Now, before you go, Dwaha? If you've never played Fox Hunt, you owe it to yourself. I don't care if you have to find a copy, steal a copy, borrow a copy, download a copy, whatever you need to do, just play this game. It's a full motion video game that featured George Lazenby and Rob Lowe and a bunch of other guys. And you basically played a down in his luck schmuck who ends up basically saving the world, James Bond style. Um, what made the game cool was, um, it wasn't a true full motion video game, like say a Night Trap or a Sewer Shark where you're always forced along. Um, if you've ever played the game D, it's like that, but with real actors. Um, you could actually change the camera angle and walk around a room or a house or an area, um, or in the one wheelchair stage, control a wheelchair through the, uh, through the uh, hallways of a hospital. Um, and that made the game very unique. The game was also really fun. It had a lot of great in-jokes to like other Capcom uh, franchises, including Street Fighter. Um, it poked fun at the whole James Bond thing. Um, it just... <laughs> by today's standards, the video footage is really grainy and the acting is beyond B-class cheesy. But it was... It, I love this game so much, I tracked down the journalistic briefcase for it. That was basically a fake briefcase with, with fake credentials and, you know, secret information and the soundtrack and everything. Um, they just... It's such a good game, but that means we also have Final Fantasy Tactics. So with Final Fantasy Tactics, um, unlike the numbered Final Fantasies where it was your typical menu-based RPG, walk around the countryside, attacking monsters, yada yada, um, Final Fantasy Tactics is a strategy game. And if you've never played a strategy game before, imagine a game of chess or checkers, where each of the pieces have their own skills and abilities and move sets and so forth, just like in chess. Um, the only difference here being the pieces can cast Bahamut and Fire Spell and Cure Spell and what have you. Um, what made Final Fantasy Tactics amazing, can I just say that right? Final f f f f f f f 
What makes Final Fantasy Tactics awesome, um, besides it being a great strategy game, is that it brought every possible thing you could bring from a Final Fantasy game into a different environment. The strategy genre. Um, you've got your job system from Final Fantasy V, you've got the call spells, um, you've got all the characters like the Black Mage, White Mage, etc. And what really brought the game just full full was just the absolute insane depth of it. Like, I marathoned this game for a week straight when it first came out. Beat the game awesome. I didn't even know you could rotate the characters in the bottom right to open up more job classes, which means I finished the game without even knowing half of the content that was there, which I need to go back now and play again. Um, but, oh, like, between Fox Hunt and Final Fantasy Tactics, it's, it's like choosing between a juicy, thick Portillo's burger in like a fine steak dinner. They're both amazing. You can both have fun with them, but God damn it, it's just the mood you're in. And as much as I want to pick Fox Hunt as the game you have to play, I honestly can't. Like, I love the game to death, but it's not that good of an underdog to topple Final Fantasy Tactics. And that said, Final Fantasy Tactics is our F game that you have to play on the PlayStation. To this day, nothing can hold a candle to it. Even its sequels on the Game Boy Advance and the DS can't touch it. Um, I think you can still download it on PlayStation Network, um, but I haven't got a chance to check because the DDoS attack. <laughs> um, but that being said, I uh, hope you guys liked the episode. Uh, next episode, we will skip to something else and then go back to the letter game afterwards. Um, once again, thank you so much for your Patreon contributions. Um, I, it's You guys are amazing. I can't say that enough. Uh, that being said, take care, you guys. Have a great week.